From Creamer Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. The city of Pretoria is this month co-hosting the October Transport Month campaign with the Gauteng Department of Roads and Transport and aims to encourage commuters to use public transport and more sustainable ways of travelling. Megan van Vengaard tells us more. Gauteng Roads and Transport MEC Ishmael Vadi noted that a number of initiatives would be carried out during the month, including initiating an electronic ticketing system for the taxi industry, organizing the Gauteng Cycling in Daba, launching three road construction projects and encouraging citizens to use public transport every Friday throughout the month. The whole idea of the 2016 October Transport Month is to promote uh, the use of public transport. Uh, we have two peculiar problems. One is that we have a, f- a, a transport system that is not fully developed. So we've got the Gout Vein, we've got Metro Rail, we've got some of the buses, but it is not a seamless wall-to-wall system in a sense. So people can, can use or access public transport at one point, but they can't get to the final point of destination. That's the first problem. The second problem is that, look, we've got in-migration coming into our province, large numbers of people coming in, population is increasing at a very rapid pace and uh, we are facing more and more traffic congestion. We've upgraded the highways with the support of Sangra, uh, but even though uh, that is taking place, you find that there's already gridlocks, you know, particularly at peak hours, sometimes even during the course of the day. Now how do you break that? The way to do it is to begin to see how we can build and strengthen the public transport system and get more and more people to actually use public transport. So rail will have to be the backbone of a transport system in Gauteng. And then the last mile, of course, we are promoting non-motorized transport. So short distances, people should be walking, should be cycling uh, to get from one point to the other. One of the biggest headaches for Gauteng commuters is the Galulis interchange in Bedford View. The department is now busy with the initial planning to build a 35 kilometer long PWV 15 to support the development of an aerotropolis at the Oatambo International Airport and the Tambo Springs Freight and Logistics Hub to ease congestion in the area. Galilis, I think Sunrun has done a super job there in terms of upgrading the infrastructure, getting the flyway and the, the flyover to going towards Swane. It has eased the traffic somewhat and the congestion there. But I think we're already beginning to see that in a matter of two or three years, that system will become gridlocked again as we had experienced it prior to the upgrading of the Gauteng Freeway Improvement Project. What we're proposing as the department now is to build the, the actually construct the PWV 15, uh, which so that you, we've got a major freight and logistics hub coming just past near Fosluvis on the N3. If that development and now Transnet has given the green light for that, so if you have heavy duty vehicles coming there, uh, you know, offloading their goods from the, from the ports, that becomes a major point. That, that traffic is going to increase substantially. And if that traffic then naturally flows towards Galulis interchange, it's going to be a nightmare. So we're starting with the planning for the upgrading uh, around the, the, the freight hub, first of all, with Sanwa, and secondly, to see if we can get the PWV 15 constructed over the next five years so that we bypass Galulis altogether and we link the N3 to the N1. Vardy also suggested that the rollout of the bus rapid transit system was taking too long. Meanwhile, Pretoria Mayor Solim Simanga said the city was happy to co-host Transport Month. You cannot grow your economy if you cannot transport your people, you cannot transport your your goods. Um, And therefore, it is important that uh, we really embrace um, you know, the transport and the role that transport play in the, in the growth of the economy. And we are very much happy today that uh, we, we were given an opportunity to be the whole city and to be a, a pilot uh, a city um, for, the, for, the, for the electric uh, vehicles that we have in our city. And uh, we have now two docking stations, one being uh, very, very close to my office here. Um, we will be able to then monitor the usage of it and possibly this will be the beginning of um, other um, you know, alternative um, it, uh, energy uh, powers that will be that will be used in our vehicles. Um, I was very very happy about a week ago when we were, we were at the CSIR when uh, the the solar uh, vehicles that were racing or are racing all the way to Cape Town. Um, we launched that. Um, you know that also gives us another aspect of what the future holds in in, t- in terms of how we are able to transport our people using much more. 
um, efficient um, and environmentally friendly ways. The sun and uh, you know forms of electricity instead of uh, the emissions that we are currently seeing now with uh, um, the oil through uh, petrol and diesel. I'm excited that uh, uh, there's a company in, in the city that is also looking at uh, um, talking to us about the first ever solar powered bus in the city and I'm, uh, that is an initiative that I'm looking forward to and I'm hoping that in the near future we will have um, that bus in our city. He also called for affordable transport as it was disheartening that many people were spending 60 to 70 percent of their salaries to move between their homes and their place of employment. Nsimanga further added that local government was in talks with businesses who are looking to donate 1,000 bicycles to increase the Metro Police's presence in the streets, particularly in problematic areas such as Sunnyside and Marabastat. Other news making headlines this week, Mashaba eyes Joburg inner city arrival as small business launchpad. Joburg Mayor Herman Mashaba vowed to breathe life back into Johannesburg's inner city and create a platform of opportunities for smaller businesses and entrepreneurs to thrive. Johannesburg is celebrating 130 years of other existence. This used to be the economic engine of this country. For this South Africa to be where it is today, it is because of Johannesburg driving the economy. And you look at the city of Johannesburg, the infrastructure that is in the city, by well standards, that infrastructure is actually modern. It's new infrastructure. Unlike all the, all the other cities or anywhere in the world. What we did when we took over power in 1994, a few years down the line, we started ignoring or failing our responsibility to uphold the rule of law and our bylaws of our city. And the city today, it's, it's in decay. I've taken a decision and fortunate enough I'm getting massive support so far to ensure that we can revive that city and ensure that we can turn this Johannesburg to be the city that all of us can live in, can work in and play in so that small businesses in particular can come and run businesses in the city of Johannesburg at rentals less than half of what they've got to pay in Centen and Rosebank. That's Krimo Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.